I work as a delivery driver for my local Papa John's. I'm currently in college, so this job was one of the few options available to me. Some of my friends also work here, but we're all delivery drivers. So even when we have the same shifts, we rarely see each other. This particular incident occurred last December when I decided to pick up some extra shifts before Christmas. That night, it was snowing quite heavily, which meant that deliveries were taking longer than usual, and we were receiving more orders than usual. While the job itself didn't stress me out too much, the non-stop hours of driving were starting to wear on me. At around 9.30 p.m., I received my next set of delivery orders. I got into my car and pulled up the directions. I had two orders to deliver, and the houses were just five minutes apart from each other. However, they were both quite far from the shop, about 15 minutes away which felt more like 25 minutes in this weather. The first leg of the drive was normal, but then it began directing me towards the less visited part of town. The houses in this area were older, and most of the shops had closed down. Nobody ventured around here unless they lived in the area, because it had become somewhat neglected and didn't meet today's standards. After driving for about 20 minutes, I entered one of the neighborhoods and headed towards the first house on my list. The road was deserted, with no parked cars on the side, and most of the houses looked rather abandoned. I reached the first address, parked on the road, and walked up to the front door. A friendly elderly man answered the door, paid for the pizza, and I headed back to my car. I then set the directions for the next house which was still in the same neighborhood. However, as I drove, I noticed that it was taking me deeper into the neighborhood, where there were fewer houses and more open space. By the time I reached the address, I couldn't see any other houses nearby. It was just trees surrounding the area. Once again, I parked on the street and walked up to the front door. I knocked and waited patiently on the porch. Although the cold weather and snow-soaked clothes were becoming quite uncomfortable, finally, after a minute, the door opened, revealing a middle-aged woman who seemed like she had just... Here's the improved version of the text. The woman who answered the door appeared as though she had just woken up, with disheveled hair and tired, emotionless eyes. I held out the pizza boxes and provided her with the total amount to pay, saying, I have your order here for two pizzas. She took the boxes and placed them on the nearby table, then asked me to wait a moment while she gathered cash. Another minute passed and she finally opened the door again. She began sifting through the cash, counting it slowly and attempting to add it all up. There was certainly something strange about her, although it was challenging to pinpoint exactly what it was. Everything she did seemed oddly peculiar. As if struggling with counting the cash wasn't enough, she initiated small talk with me. It was typical conversation, asking about my day and such. I responded politely, but the whole situation felt increasingly odd. It was as though she was intentionally stalling for time. At one point, while she continued talking, I glanced back at my car briefly, trying to distance myself from the uncomfortable situation. That's when I noticed a man standing right next to my car. He was peering into the windows and tampering with the door. However, when I turned my attention back to the woman, her expression had shifted to anger. I realized the danger too late as she reached out and grabbed me, simultaneously yelling to the man by my car. He swiftly turned and sprinted toward us. In my panicked state, I managed to break free from the woman's grasp and made a dash for it. Instinct took over, and I sprinted into the nearby 
trees, with the man's heavy footsteps crunching through the snow behind me. It felt like he was pursuing me relentlessly, until, after about two minutes of intense running, his footsteps gradually faded away. Exhausted and breathless, I finally stopped to catch my breath. Thankfully, the moon's illumination was sufficient to guide me through the forest and back to one of the streets in the neighborhood. Once I regained cell phone signal, I immediately called 911. After enduring the cold for what felt like an eternity, an officer arrived on the scene. Another patrol car headed to the house, where they found the man attempting to break into my car. In essence, the motive behind their actions was likely financial desperation, leading them to resort to robbing my vehicle. The whole elaborate distraction seemed designed to allow the man to pilfer from my car without my awareness. However, since I had witnessed his actions, it remains unclear what their intentions might have been had they succeeded. After the crash, I hoped they would have just let me go, but it's evident that reporting them would have been inevitable so I doubt they would have let me off easily. I'm just grateful for escaping unharmed and for being their first and last victim, as they were arrested without the chance to harm anyone else. This incident occurred last winter in early February. I was on my way to my next DoorDash delivery. I felt a bit fatigued after driving for the past four hours, and it was nearly midnight. After completing this delivery, I had decided to call it a night and head home. I was concerned about getting drowsy on the road, especially given the icy and snowy conditions. I was driving down a fairly deserted road, a side route that connected two of the main towns in our city. However, there was a stretch of about five meters that had absolutely nothing, no buildings, houses, or any place to stop. While traversing this section, something peculiar occurred. I can't quite explain it, but I suddenly felt an overwhelming wave of exhaustion that caused me to lose focus on the road for just a few seconds. Surprisingly, those few seconds were all it took. I believe I hit a patch of ice and my car slid toward the side. Although I fully woke up at this point, it was too late. I tried to steer the car back onto the road, but it continued to slide off and into the small ditch between the road and the woods. Fortunately, it wasn't a severe crash, as the snow cushioned the impact, but it left me a bit shaken. I knew right away that getting out of this situation would be nearly impossible. My car was wedged on the incline of the ditch, buried in thick snow. I didn't even bother getting out to assess the extent of the situation, though I did attempt to maneuver the car to gain some traction. If anything, I made it worse. While in the midst of trying to figure everything out, I noticed headlights down the road. Initially, I thought it was just a passing car, but after a few moments, it became apparent that they weren't moving. Someone must have been parked further down the road with their headlights on, which I found a bit unsettling, considering the desolate nature of this long, empty road. They weren't close enough to have stopped and offered assistance, but they weren't far enough away for my car's headlights to go unnoticed. I retrieved my phone and called my dad, knowing he would still be awake and hoping he could assist me. I had never been in a situation like this before, so I was uncertain about what to do. My dad assured me that he would contact roadside assistance and then drive down to wait with me. I expressed my gratitude and felt a sense of relief, knowing he would arrive shortly. I continued to peer down the road, searching for the headlights of the car I had seen earlier 
they had vanished. It was too dark to discern anything at that distance without proper lighting. So I wasn't sure if the car had driven away, or if it was still there, but it switched off its lights. As time passed, my unease grew, fueled by the eerie silence that surrounded me. To make some extra cash, the weather wasn't great that evening. Although it wasn't snowing, the cold wind cut right through me. The roads were still covered in a thin layer of snow from earlier in the day. I began my delivery route around 6 p.m., accepting a few orders to pass the time. As the evening progressed, I noticed that the temperature was dropping rapidly. I was bundled up in layers, but the biting cold still managed to seep through. The orders kept coming in, and I found myself driving through dimly lit streets, making my way to various drop-off locations. It was around 8.30 p.m. when I received an order for a delivery that would take me to a rather remote part of town. The address seemed unfamiliar, tucked away on the outskirts of the city. Despite my apprehension about the cold and desolate location, I decided to accept the order. It was my job after all. As I drove toward the destination, the surroundings grew progressively more isolated. I noticed fewer streetlights, and the roads became increasingly narrower. My GPS led me deeper into this unfamiliar area, and I couldn't shake the feeling of being alone in the cold, desolate night. When I finally arrived at the specified address, my unease deepened. The house was situated at the end of a long, dimly lit driveway. It appeared to be an older, somewhat neglected property, with overgrown shrubs and an eerie silence surrounding it. I parked my car in front of the house and checked the order details. Two pizzas to be delivered to this isolated location. I couldn't help but feel a sense of foreboding, but I reminded myself that it was just another delivery, and I had done countless similar ones without incident. Summoning my courage, I stepped out of the car, the biting cold instantly assaulting me. I carried the pizzas up to the front door, my breath visible in the frigid air. The house itself looked worn, with peeling paint and an overall sense of neglect. I rang the doorbell and waited, my breath forming frosty plumes in the cold air. The moments ticked by slowly, and I couldn't help but feel like I was being watched. The house felt unsettlingly quiet, and I began to question my decision to accept this order. Finally, after what felt like an eternity, the door creaked open, revealing a dimly lit interior. I could barely make out the figure of a middle-aged woman who seemed to have just woken up. Her disheveled appearance and emotionless eyes sent a shiver down my spine. With a forced smile, I held out the pizza boxes and provided her with the total cost. She accepted the boxes and placed them on a nearby table. But instead of immediately paying, she requested a moment to find cash. As I stood there, the silence inside the house grew uncomfortable. The woman, still appearing somewhat distant, began counting her cash slowly, her actions strangely deliberate. It was difficult to pinpoint exactly what was amiss, but her behavior sent chills down my spine. Truck with tinted windows. I couldn't make out the driver's face as they remained in the vehicle. The engine shut off, and there was an eerie silence that settled over the gas station. I decided to give it a moment, thinking this might be the customer coming to collect their order. My unease grew as I waited, the minutes ticking by. The longer I stood there, the more the situation felt off. I kept glancing at my phone, hoping for a message or response, but there was nothing. The driver's side door of the pickup slowly opened and a man stepped out. He was tall, wearing a dark hoodie that obscured most of his face. 
I couldn't see his features clearly, but something about his presence sent alarm bells ringing in my head. He began to approach me, his steps deliberate but unhurried. My heart raced, and my instincts screamed at me to get back in my car and leave. I turned and made a beeline for my vehicle, my pulse pounding in my ears. Just as I reached my car, I heard the man's voice behind me. He asked, are you the delivery driver? I didn't respond, my hand shaking as I fumbled for my car keys. I managed to unlock the car and quickly got inside, slamming the door shut and locking it. The man was now standing right outside my window, his face still hidden by the hood. He repeated his question, are you the delivery driver? This time, his tone was more insistent, and it sent a shiver down my spine. I hesitated for a moment, not sure how to respond. I finally replied, yes, I am, but you haven't paid for your order. The man's response was chilling. He said, I don't want the food. I want you to come with me. Panic coursed through my veins as I realized the gravity of the situation. Without hesitation, I started the car and sped out of the gas station, leaving the man standing there. I glanced in the rearview mirror to see if he was following me, but he remained behind. I called my manager and explained what had just happened. He advised me to contact the police immediately, which I did. The officers arrived at the gas station, but the man and his pickup were long gone. I later learned from the police that there had been reports of a similar individual attempting to lure delivery drivers into his vehicle in the area. They were actively investigating the case, but hadn't made any arrests yet. That night, I realized just how vulnerable I could be while doing deliveries. It was a harrowing experience, one that left me shaken and cautious about taking orders in unfamiliar or remote locations. My safety had been jeopardized, and it was a stark reminder of the dangers that can lurk in unexpected places. Ground. And turned around to head back to my car. My heart was pounding in my chest as I reached for the car handle and quickly got inside. I locked the doors and glanced in the rearview mirror to see what the man was doing to my shock. He was now standing right outside my window, his face still obscured by the hood he tapped on the glass and said, are you the delivery driver? His voice had an eerie tone to it. A chill ran down my spine and I hesitated for a moment, not sure how to respond. I finally replied, yes, I am, but you haven't paid for your order. The man's response was chilling. He said, I don't want the food. I want you to come with me. My heart raced as I realized the gravity of the situation without hesitation. I started the car and sped out of the gas station, leaving the man standing there. I glanced in the rearview mirror to see if he was following me, but he remained behind. I called my manager and explained what had just happened. He advised me to contact the police immediately, which I did the officers arrived at the gas station, but the man and his pickup were long gone. I later learned from the police that there had been reports of a similar individual attempting to lure delivery drivers into his vehicle in the area. They were actively investigating the case, but hadn't made any arrests yet. That night, I realized just how vulnerable I could be while doing deliveries. It was a harrowing experience, one that left me shaken and cautious about taking orders in unfamiliar or remote locations. My safety had been jeopardized, and it was a stark reminder of the dangers that can lurk in unexpected places. I'm so glad you made the quick decision to leave the gas station 
and that you're safe, it's indeed a chilling experience. And your intuition to get out of that situation likely saved you from potential danger. It's unfortunate that the police couldn't apprehend the individual, but your safety should always be your top priority. If you ever encounter a similar situation, don't hesitate to call the police and provide them with any information you can recall, including details about the person and their vehicle. Always trust your instincts when it comes to personal safety. Thank you for sharing your story. It serves as a reminder for all of us to be vigilant and cautious, especially in unfamiliar or isolated locations.